ministry, chaos is gonna happen, but it's a lot easier to get through it when you have a team like C3 Global and they just get it. I think ministry is impossible to do alone. By creatively collaborating our ideas and resources and experiences, we can do more together than we can do alone. C3 Global means relationships. If you don't have people around you in order to inspire you and kind of keep you in the game, you, you, you end up getting discouraged and you feel alone and you, and you want to quit. It really kept us going in a really, really tough spot. Getting outside of my environment, being around so many different leaders, they've reshifted my thinking to cause me to think outside of the little bubble that I had found myself in. At C3 Global, we're committed to doing life and ministry together and helping you get the most out of yours. Through the compilation and bringing together of churches around the world, we can accomplish great things. We host roundtables from border to border and coast to coast. Each month, we host webinars that uncover the best practices in the church today. To see lead pastors that have been doing it for 25 years and to be able to learn from what they bring, it's invaluable. Leadership is laced in every single thing that Ed and Lisa and C3 Global are all about. We're making a difference across America and around the globe. We're operating in Haiti, Nicaragua, and Guatemala. We have now served over 8 million meals. We're talking about a long-term commitment to see God raise up a generation that has been transformed by the power of God. We believe that can be done. At C3 Global, we partner together to do so much more than we could ever do alone. Since 2011, Misty and I have been attending C3 Conference, a creative church conference with pastors Ed and Lisa Young in Irving, Texas. And I cannot tell you the profound impact Pastor Ed and Lisa have had on our lives and on this ministry. A lot of things that you see happening here at Mountain Movers Church and the ultimate uh, result of it all is life change, real and contagious life change, is because of the things that we've picked up at this conference. And I want to tell you guys, uh, when you want to get inspired and when you want to just go further as a leader, as just, just as a follower of Jesus Christ, you got to get around greatness. You got to rub shoulders with those that are doing it. And I'm telling you, C3 Conference is the place to be. We go every February this year, or in 2018, it's going to land on Valentine's Day. So we're going to have a great time uh, celebrating Valentine's Day in Irving, Texas. I want to encourage, we have, there's an open invitation. So if you want to go if you want to further your relationship with God, if you want to stretch your, your leadership capabilities, if you want to strengthen your, uh, your value as a, just a, a leader in the church, all right? And if you're a volunteer, if you just want to go further in, in your walk with God, you got to be at this conference. Last year we took 25, 26, 20 something. I don't know what we took, but it was a little less than 30. Had an awesome time. We changed uh, Texas like permanently. We made history. It, it was pretty cool, pretty crazy. When you get a uh, when you get a wild uh, group of people from the Grove and surrounding areas, great things happen on the road. I'm just saying. But uh, we want you to join us. All right. So just mark your calendar. We're gonna in the next few weeks. We're gonna get um, we're gonna get things available for you out in the foyer so you can sign up for that. You'll notice in that video and behind me, this good-looking young man, his name is Dr. Claude Thomas. He's the president of C3 Global. He works there on staff at Fellowship Church in Irving. And I tell you what, this guy loves God with all of his heart, and he is full of years and years and years of knowledge and wisdom about the ministry. And he, he goes and visits these, these orphanages, and he does roundtables all over the country, pouring into pastors, pouring into church leaders. And uh, I want to tell you, we're going to have an amazing time with him next week. So I want to encourage you to be here for that. Bring some friends. It's going to really be a great time. And we're going to take him fishing with Real Time Adventures on take him Saturday. Bow fishing, I bow think, fishing. which he's never done. I sent cool. him the promo video uh, for, for Real Time Adventures, and he goes, whoa. He's like, I cannot wait to do that on beautiful Grand Lake. So we're going to have a great time. Join us next week. Now, today, uh, we are going to have our grand finale, if you will, for this series that we've been in, Crayons and Chaos. I hope you've enjoyed it. The first week, we talked about managing the mess, all right? When, when fall makes its way into our lives, back to school happens, 
life gets kind of crazy, right? And you got to learn how to manage the mess. You got to balance life's demands. And we talked about that the first week. If you missed it, go back. Uh, You can look on our YouTube channel. You can look on Facebook and and watch that. Last week, we talked about about the pressures of life, surviving the pressures. Really good message. If you missed it, go back and check that out. Today, we are going to have a panel of educators because we are going to answer a really, really powerful question that we all should be asking ourselves. And today's mission is, let's show it here on the screen, today's question is what can, how do we as pastors and students and teachers support staff, make the greatest impact for the kingdom of God during this school year? I want to ask that again so that we can stay true to our purpose during this message. How do we as parents, students, teachers, and support staff make the greatest impact for the kingdom of God during this school year? And I'll even add, if you're a grandparent or if you are just a citizen, an innocent bystander of the, of the chaos, right? You have a part in making this the best school year yet. And I know that I know that I know that during today's talk, during today's discussion, we are going to, those things are going to come to the surface, those answers, how we can make this school year the best it's ever been, not just for the school system, not just for our communities, but also for the kingdom of God. It's going to be really great. Get ready. That's right. So if you have your word, open it with me this morning to Deuteronomy. That's in the Old Testament. We're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And this is for everybody. Don't, don't write us off right now if you've already raised your kids and like, you know, like, pff, that's over for me. Like, don't write us off, all right? This is for everybody. Look at Deuteronomy 6, starting in verse 5, and it says this. And you must, now just pause. If you're a parent or you're not, and you tell somebody you must do this, Well, what do you expect them to do? To do it. I mean, if I tell my kids, when I get home, you must have taken the trash out. Like, it's not sitting there one more day. And I come in from work, and the trash is still in that room. What do you think is going to happen at my house? Somebody. Something that is YouTube worthy, I promise you that. (laughs) Somebody's in some big trouble, right? So keep that in mind as I read this. You must. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. What does all mean? All. All means all. It means everything, every part of your being. God doesn't want some little sliver that you're willing to give him. He doesn't want your scraps. He doesn't want your leftovers. He wants you all, heart, soul, mind, and strength. Good. Verse 6, it says this, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly To these commands that I'm giving you today, what are we talking about? We're talking about the word of God, all right? He was laying it out for him. He says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands, wear them on your foreheads as reminders. This morning, what I want you to understand before we get into this panel discussion is two things that are very important pertaining to this right here. One is this. Parents, you are the primary educators given by God. The children you have, they are gifts from God. You are the primary educator. The actual education system, it's secondary. And some of you, you may have chosen to homeschool, and that's phenomenal. So you're both primary and secondary. You're teaching them first spiritually secondary, you're teaching them to be successful in the world with the ability to be able to go out and to be able to contribute to our society. Number two is this. Our goal cannot just be to raise smart kids, although I hope you raise smart kids because that's awesome. And some of you guys have some amazingly genius children, but it can't just be to raise smart kids. It has to be to raise spiritual kids champions. And I want you to keep this in your mind as we head into this panel discussion this morning. We send our kids off to school for the majority of the day, do we not? If you're in public school system or even in a private, my kids are at school more of the hours they're awake than they are with me, all right? But my primary job, understand, and yours as a parent, is to raise spiritual champions. So the number one thing that's going to happen in my home And this is what I want to commission you to do today is to understand that raising smart kids is awesome. Getting straight A's and 4.0's and all that, I did it, it's awesome, it's fun. But if you do all of that and your children miss heaven 
Because this wasn't taught in the home. What have you really accomplished? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26 says this. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Today, again, what we're looking at is how do we all make an impact this school year on the kingdom of God? It starts right here. And the only way, parents, that your children are going to walk out of your home and be an impact in the school system, we're going to talk about in a minute, is if that is an outflow of your own life. It starts with you. All right, so this morning, we're going to invite our educators to make their way to the platform. And as we do, go ahead, Pastor Brad. As they do, give them a round of applause as they make their way up to the platform today. We have some teachers. We have some administrators. Come on up, guys. And if, you are, if you're in the congregation today and you are a teacher, administrator, support staff, would you stand up as well where you are? Would you stand up, please? Awesome. Woo-hoo! Very good. Give them a hand. If you're and remain school, standing. Absolutely. Remain standing. Remain Stay standing. standing. Remain standing. We have some gifts for you today. And oh, I need to borrow one of those. Daniel, can we see one? Can I, ha- can I see one real quick? So we have a little treat. It doesn't in any way compare to, to what you guys do each and every day. This is just a little way of saying thank you. Three ingredients for a successful school, school year. A little bit of chocolate, strong coffee, and a whole lot of Jesus. All right? That's what we're talking about. So we've got you a gift card for 10 bucks to Starbucks. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Got some chocolate, and today we're going to give you some Jesus. So thank you guys so much for what you do. Seriously, um, we, I'm sure that our teachers do not hear it enough, how much they are appreciated, how much they are loved, how much they are valued. So thank you guys for what you do, because I know if you have any kids like me, then you probably want to retire early or you want to change fields altogether. So I am sorry, but thank God they've got medication nowadays for kids like me. So thank you, Jesus, for that. Yes. All right, so we, we are going to, we're going to ask some really great questions. You're making me nervous. Are you going to sit down? Or, well, you got in my way. Make, like we're go, a little slim go, on space. Go. All right, here so, we go. So we're just going to get down to the real and the raw today. We are going to just have some great discussion, all right? We're going to have some conversation around this idea on how we can make this the best school year yet. But before we do, we're going to introduce these wonderful, wonderful people. And so I'm going to start down here, right here. Miss Kathy oh, Keith. Which places are All right. From first service. Switched. From last <laughs> service. It's awesome. Kathy Keith has served for 14 years teaching 7th and 8th grade uh, English at Anderson Middle School in McDonald County. Give it up for Miss Kathy <laughs> Keith. Next to her, we have Sierra Oxendine, and she has been teaching for three years, 7th grade junior high, Neosho. Neosho Junior High, and last service, Misty said, go Wildcats. So, <laughs> give it up for her. And now, next to her, we have Miss Courtney Bard. She's on staff with us. Her and her husband serve as our family pastors. And this is her sixth year teaching. She currently teaches, now this year, third grade. Last year, it was first grade, correct? Uh, third grade this year at Anderson Elementary, McDonald County. Give it up for Miss Courtney today. Next to her is LaDonna Wil- uh, McLean. I said Wilson almost. Wow. wow. And I didn't even know you then. I didn't even know you then. Is that on your Facebook? Yeah, that's, that's why it threw me off. Facebook is powerful. That's right. Andy, I, Andy, I do apologize. <laughs> she's he trying to connect with those serving. people that she knew pre-Andy. So that's all she's doing right there. But you know what? I'm just going to say one thing about Miss LaDonna. I want to say if, if, if I had to rewind the clock and I was one of the children in that school, I would not cross this woman because <laughs> she could whip my butt right now, and I'm 40. So I'm not going to cross her, but I'm very thankful for her. She has been serving for 20 years <laughs> secondary education. That's just secondary education. 10 years post-secondary. She's now the assistant principal uh, for Knoll Elementary, Knoll, Missouri. Give it up for Miss LaDonna. 30 years, 30 years combined. I love it. Next to her is her handsome, outstanding stud of a knight in shining armor. I just made that up. She didn't actually say that, but I'm sure she agrees. She's thinking it all the time. Those wheels are turning. <laughs> Andy McLean has been serving for five years. He's been teaching juniors and seniors construction technology at Crowder College. Give it up for Mr. Andy McLean. All right. 
Before we get started, let me explain that you can also be a part of this, all right? We have questions prepared for this group. They're going to respond with their best answers. But if you want to participate, you can text your question to 918-786-8555. This is also very cool. This is our live service. So if you're watching live, Facebook, you can also text your questions to the same number, and we will get to as many as we possibly can. We may not get to them Maybe all. Maybe we'll get a text from Pakistan. So don't send That'd me cool. ugly text if awesome. I don't ask your question, all right? <laughs> Very cool. Okay. All right, so first question we're going to ask right out of the chute, okay? I'm just going to throw that away here for a second. All right, wow. so, yeah, get ready. So, okay, I know that it's, it's, it's really, really difficult nowadays as a teacher to share your faith, okay? How do you guys, what's the greatest challenge that you face... When you go to work every day and you want to shine your light, what are, what are the, 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 the walls or the obstacles that are in your way? What's the greatest challenges for being able to share your faith and, and spread the light? Anybody. Lawsuits. Lawsuits. Now, you, you do. You have to be really careful. Yeah. Um, so you have to just be an example and then hope that they'll question you. Because in my particular school, if a, if a student questions you or brings it up, we're allowed to go as far as we want to yes you can engage them so you just have to be careful how you do it right but if you're an example they're going to ask questions okay so i'm glad you said that so let's talk about that for a second do you want to add to that miss ladonna i don't know go ahead okay (laughs) what's the greatest way you can be an example i do want to add okay (laughs) i think the greatest way you can be an example is to love other people don't judge them love them right out of the gate Regardless of their situation, regardless of where they're at or where they come from, you love other people. And by loving other people, then they get to see Jesus' love. And what a platform that you all have because you not only get to love students, you get to love parents as well. And so God has placed you guys on an incredible platform where you get access to that, those ministry opportunities day in and day out. And I'm sure you guys would agree there are plenty of ministry opportunities all around you each and every day. Awesome. This time I'm going to ask a question that's been texted in, all right? So they're not prepped for this one. All right. How do we get God, more of God, inside the schools? Ms. Sierra, you want to start? Um, Yeah, I'll start with that one. Um, My first year teaching, I taught at our eighth grade section in Neosho, which if any of you are familiar with Neosho, we just got a brand new junior high where we finally brought together seventh and eighth grade. So our motto this year is NJH United. But uh, when I taught at eighth grade, we had FCA at eighth grade. And we did not have FCA at seventh grade. So my, my following year, I uh, went to seventh grade. And myself and some other teachers, we were like, man, there's a need here. We need FCA at seventh grade. We're our own campus, and nothing's happening over here. And these kids need Jesus. Sierra, can I break in? Will yes. you tell people that may not know, what is FCA? Oh, what sure. does it stand for? FCA uh, is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Some schools call it FCS, Fellowship of Christian Students, because you don't have to be an athlete to go to FCA. Uh, it's before school. We spend 20 minutes with them doing devotions once a week. Um, usually we try to at Neosho. I don't know how some of your others work, but we try to bring in people from the community once a week, not just us bringing the message to them, but some youth ministers that the kids are familiar with and the churches in the community bring them in. Uh, we feed them donuts, which... I'd be there. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you bribe them. Yeah. You, we do it here. It's that's awesome. right. That's why, that's why these people are here is the donuts. So I would say get involved. You don't have to be a youth minister to come in and help us with FCA or FCS. Uh, if you want to, if you don't want to come in and speak because you're maybe not comfortable with that, but you just want to help, uh, help pay for donuts. That helps. Uh, and right. if you want to come in and just love on kids, guys, that's really all it's about. It's really not hard. It used to intimidate me, but you're just loving on kids and talking to them about Jesus. So that's good. And Madonna? most often, those are student-led. So encourage your students to be bold. Be bold for Christ, to speak up, to speak out, to not be afraid. Students have way more rights than we do on this panel. And they can carry their Bibles. They can share the gospel. They can share scripture at school. They can talk to other students about Jesus. And so student-led, they can invite others to these um, student-led groups. And so they have a, a lot more impact with their peers than maybe we do. So encourage them to be very bold. That, that's very good. And I, I want to say, too, because we're talking about FCA, um, I want to talk to Kathy just for a second. I think this is so cool. Um, I remember many years ago, do you remember? It was, 
we were in the middle of a snowstorm, all right, and get, leave it to Brad to go for a drive at night in the middle of a snowstorm. But it was beautiful. It was very peaceful. And a lot of times we just enjoyed just going for a prayer drive, if you know what I mean. So we're just praying, and we're, we're driving through, um, through McDonald County. We're going through Anderson. And this is before we ever started the church. And God just gave us a burden for the school system. And I remember us just praying and feeling impressed to say, Lord, send send missionaries into this school system. God, raise up teachers that will pour into these kids and share the love of God with these kids. And regardless of what church they go to, it doesn't matter. But God, just pour out your spirit in this school system and send missionaries. So then we go to plant the church. And around that same time, a little before we, we started the church, and after that prayer, she is fresh out of school. Do you want to tell that story? You actually landed a job where? In Anderson. In, in Anderson. McDonald County. McDonald County. And then, and what's so cool is you started FCA. Did you, well, you, or did you take it? Tell us what happened. Yeah, actually, um, I don't see Louis Adams, Courtney's dad, but um, this is kudos to him. He came to me one day and said, hey, we need um, teacher sponsors just to even sit in with the students for FCA, and um, he actually would come and speak at that time almost every week, and um, God just really blessed me with the opportunity to do that, and I wouldn't trade it for anything because, you know, the kids know who their spiritual leaders are in the school system, and I just love that. That is so good. I love it. And what a wonderful opportunity to be able to, I mean, talk about bringing the gospel into the school. Right. What a great way to do it. And, and Andy, you know, was talking about lawsuits. I mean, this is a way that you can do it and, and not really have to operate right. in fear, which we shouldn't anyway at, at all because God has called us to spread the gospel no matter where we're at. And so we're going to talk about that. That's good. All right, next question. What are the greatest challenges students face today, and what can parents do to help lighten that load? Ladonna, well, you want to speak to that? Um, well, last service we talked about, obviously, peer pressure. And it comes today, I think it's, it's probably even more difficult maybe than when we were in school because there's social media and there's face-to-face. There's just so many things now that our kids face that that maybe we didn't and so as as a parent and as a public school administrator um, one of the things that uh, that I've shared with my own children in the public school system and I've told them to find a godly teacher somebody in the building that that they can go to when they're being or they're in a position where they're unsure. They're in a position where they feel uncomfortable, that they can go to, that they can talk with, that they can pray with, that, that they can get godly advice from without fear. Because if they go to a teacher, that teacher then can, can share with them. And so I've encouraged them to find that teacher in the building that they can um, communicate with. And we also, as parents in our own home, um, talk to our kids continually about Jesus. We share the gospel with, with our kids. We, sh- we, we do go through scripture with our kids. We talk about Jesus with our kids um, constantly. We ask constantly in situations what would be the uh, godly way to handle this situation. What would Jesus want do in this situation? What would be the right way to handle this situation and one one other thing that I talked about in the last situ, last uh, service was when you just don't know when you're just there and you don't know um, and it was is very interesting the the song service song choices when you don't know what to do or what to pray just say Jesus because that's such a powerful name if I don't if you don't know what to pray if I don't know what to pray I can just say Jesus because that's such a powerful name and he can help you through any situation so that is how we handle as parents our situation and personally as an administrator a lot of times that's how I handle my situations with the things that I have to go have to deal with because some of them are hard and I pray myself through those as well. That's good. Courtney, yeah, you can teach I just, elementary, so yeah. you speak to that. Well, and I was just thinking, as parents, sometimes it's easy, especially if our, our children are little, to think that, 
if they're not engaged in the conversation, they're not hearing what's going on. And I've seen lots of little kids come in with big people problems. And so as a parent, being that buffer to not, ha- to not have your, your little people in your home come to school dealing with big people problems, to be that defense for them, not talking about money problems or marriage problems or things. Even if, you're, even if they're in the room and you think they're not listening, they're listening. They're listening, and then they're going to school, and they're talking to us about it, saying, you know, I don't know if we're going to get to eat, or I don't know if we're going to have money for this. They're hearing it. So really protecting your kids, your little kids especially, from having to stress about big people problems. That is so good. I had one of my daughters this week tell me, with new teachers, I mean, we've only been in school two days, and she said, I'm not sure if he's a believer or not. I mean, I always ask my kids, you know, are they a believer? And she said, I don't know. And I said, then ask. And she goes, no. And I said, you aren't going to get in trouble for asking. I said, be bold. Just go up to them and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you go to church? I said, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? They tell you no, and then you know to pray for them. But you as parents, teach your kids to be bold. Because as teachers and administrators, they may not be able to come right out and tell them, hey, I'm a believer, unless a student starts a conversation. So in order to know who those believers are, I mean, one of my girls has had a, had a coach for a long time, and she's like, I know she has to be a Christian mom. I know she has to go to church because of the way she lives. I'm like, ask her. Ask her where she goes. All right, we're going to— I'd love that if, if my students would ask me, are you a believer? Then because it that opens, opens that the door. door then. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk en- about Encourage this. your kids to be bold. Yeah, yeah. and That'd teach them what to say. If they say no, I say, hey, if they say no, hand them an invite and walk off. That's all you got to do. <laughs> like, you need Jesus, too. And, you know, they can call me. You know what I mean? They got our number. All right. Here's another the question? Oh, we do. Have you seen an increase, a decline, or a flat trend of students discussing Jesus Ooh, in the schools over the years that you've been teaching? Has this impacted the classroom? Wow. Go. I don't think I've been teaching long enough to answer this. All right. I'm going to pass this to the experience. (laughs) I would say just overall as society, there's definitely been a decrease. Um, There are certain kids in the school, and you know, that are are bold and want to speak out, and we do have some students that are very strong in the area, but overall as a nation, you know, we need to pray for our kids and our nation and our schools in that area. That's good. Madonna? Guys, well, you put your mic up. <laughs> I got some money to make sure. Guys, when I was in school, we did Bible studies in school with the little felt. Okay, I'm aging myself. <laughs> we did Bible grow. studies in school, in public school. So have we seen a decline? I think you can look and see where we're at now as to the answer to that. So, so teach your students to be ways. bold. That's what, you know, that's why we're doing this today because... The students, some of them are in here, but parents, it starts with you encouraging them to be bold when they go into school. Teach them how to talk to their teachers. Teach them how to have conversations on the playground. Teach them, eight, and I won't say a name. One of my boys got into an end-time conversation with another kid in seventh grade, and the other student was eighth grade, and he said, hey, it's time to go to class, but I want to meet you outside after this one. I want to come back. I want to hear more about what you're talking about. And that time, he brought two more students. And he said, these guys right here, tell them what you were telling me earlier about the rapture. Now, I don't know if he had all of his theology right, because he had got bits and pieces of Brad and I teaching on it, but I was like, go get him. Go try. That's awesome. All right, here's another one. How do you refill spiritually when at work things are super stressful? Chocolate. So I'm thinking, hold on. So I'm thinking, this is like the 2 o'clock, you're ready to kill the children like Brad, and what do you do in that moment? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I think you, you really need to find the other believing teachers in your school. Good. Because when you can partner up and, you know, when you can say to your neighbor next door, you know, hey, I'm really struggling with this right now or it's really been a trying day, then you know somebody else in the building is believing with you or they're praying for that kid with you. So, like, to have a good team. Good. I work with a lady, and we asked one day, said, why don't you eat lunch with us? You know, are you just antisocial? She said, no, that is my time to refill spiritually. She said, I eat lunch in my room, I put on my praise music, and she said, I refill spiritually to make it through the afternoon. I do that a lot, too. That's awesome. Kathy, don't you play worship music in your room? I try to do that before school and, um, you know, my plan time or anything, yeah, when I can. Yeah, and just... Like she said, just mention the name of Jesus, you know, because he knows how much we need him throughout the day. I know with kids like Brad. Brad and I drove buses from the time we were 21 until 
maybe three years ago, we drove buses in Joplin and Grove, and I used to go out early to my bus, mm -hmm. and I would pray over pray every, every seat. single seat on that bus, because there's days you want to kill the children that are with you, I'm sure, in your classroom, <laughs> in your, on your bus, you're just like, I it's know they true. need Jesus, but right now, I think I need him more, because I'm going to hurt him. You know what I mean? And so you pray over them, but those, that's good. All right. Um, one more question, and then we got to wrap it up. I know we're almost out of time. That's so good. All right. Have any of your students asked for help believing in God? Have they come to you Ooh. because of the way you live your life? Have they come to you? We'll start on the end. We'll yes. take two or three of you. Had a young lady. We, we got in a discussion one, in the afternoons. We get a little downtime, and she said, I cannot believe you believe in that fantasy. So what I told her, I said, okay, let's, let's talk about this. I said, let's say that I'm wrong. And that nothing happens. I said, so I've lived my life trying to do right by people, trying to live the proper way. I said, I have lost nothing. I die, turn to dust. I said, what if you're wrong? So she went home. Good response. She, she thought about it and came back, and she actually asked, can you tell me more about it? I said, sure. Mm. That works not just in school, any place in society, That's all right? right? Hang on to that one if somebody doesn't believe in God. Anybody else want to speak to that? Have students come up to you asking you about believing in God? I mean, yeah, they do it all the time. I mean, well, I think awesome. when they know that you're, they know where I stand. I have a Bible on my desk every day um, in my room. At the beginning of the year, I have to give a disclaimer. I say, all right, guys, I like listening to music when you're doing homework. I, I get it. Uh, but I can't just turn on Pandora to any channel. Pandora's not edited. And so if Beyonce comes on and says a wordy dirt, you know. A I wordy mean, dirt. A wordy dirt. <laughs> I, love I, can't, it. I can't do anything, you know. So I'm like, guys, here's my rule. If we do music in here, we got to all be on the same page that it's Christian. But if you got a problem with that, you come let me know. And we, we just won't do music, you know. And most of the time, the kids are like, yes. That's awesome. It's surprising that's to great. me how many music. kids are that's like, fantastic. yes. Yeah. Christian music. They love it. So that's, awesome. that's what, I mean, they just know where I stand. And so, yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. They'll say, can we go pray in the bathroom? Wow. Yeah, that's they, awesome. All right, Kathy, what I was about just going to say, not just students come, but um, other adults in the building. You know, as people are watching you, and they know who to go to to pray for. And I just want to encourage you guys, if someone asks you to pray for them, pray right then. Yes. Don't just say, okay, and walk away. No, pray right then because it is so powerful. And it may be That's awkward the first time at Walmart, and you just stop and pray, <laughs> but you get over that. And then you feel so good because you're like, I just did something awesome for Jesus. Like, just stop and pray. Kathy's exactly right. And I'll say that Kathy, over the years, you know, the church does a fast once a month. And Kathy, because she's been fasting at school, other adults have noticed. And they join our fast now monthly because of her witness. Awesome. All right. Amen. Give him a hand. All right. So, I'm sorry. My back hurts really yeah. bad. I don't know Pray for a breath. Pray for my back. Um, so, one word that would describe... What we could do to create the greatest impact this school year would be prayer. We all agree? I agree, yeah. I, if you haven't seen the movie Facing the Giants, you need to watch it. It never fails every time it comes to the, you know, you see throughout the movie, this local pastor is just going through the hallways in the early morning before anybody gets there, and he's praying over every locker in that, in that place. And our core value here at Mount Movers Church is... His presence is our priority. God's presence is our priority. Because we know wherever God's presence is, man, people's lives are going to be touched. People's lives are going to be changed. Every one of these seats are prayed over every Sunday. And that's why I believe we feel God's presence like we do is because we welcome Him. We invite Him to be here. And we pray. And in that movie, it's so cool. Towards the end of the movie, you know, the, the coach is he's just in a disarray. And somebody comes up to him and he says... Grant, do you, not, do you not know what's going on right now? They said, what? He said, it's been going on for hours. The students are spread out all over the campus. Man, it makes me cry every time I see this movie. Kids are spread out all over the campus, and they're confessing their sins to one another, and they're accepting Jesus as their Savior, and they're all huddled up in groups. And An amazing, an amazing part of that movie. It's my favorite part. And I think it doesn't just have to be a movie. We can have that in every school system in the surrounding region. From coast to coast, we can have that if more teachers like this, right? And like some of you that are sitting in the congregation today, will pray. When people like you and me that aren't teachers will pray. When parents will begin to pray. 
God will hear our prayers. He will hear from heaven. He will answer our plea and our call. We can have revival in the schools. Amen? We can see God move. We can see His glory move like it's never moved before if we will commit to pray. You know, oftentimes we pray for missionaries on foreign fields, but we believe that the public school system is one of the right greatest here, mission fields soil. in our culture today. These teachers, administrators, coaches, they are on the mission field right. as well as your students who have the biggest opportunity to voice Jesus in that mission field. That's right. If you all would stand up at this time, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do what we just talked about. We are going to pray. This church is so blessed to have so many wonderful teachers that love God in so many different school districts. I love what God is doing in this region. Let's pray today. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we pray that in this nation, from coast to coast, that your glory would settle in every school campus and every home where children are taught, every private school, every Christian school. Let your glory settle. Let your presence precede us. And those students and those teachers and administrators, support staff, coaches, every single day of this school year, God, let your presence be there waiting to touch hearts, change lives. We pray a hedge of protection over this country, God. We will not operate in fear because of any any devil, any demon that tries to instill fear in our hearts because of terroristic attacks. God, we don't operate in fear. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, Father God. And you don't give us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind, God, to go out every day as these teachers do and teach our children, God, to make the world a better place. And as these missionaries, God, continually pour into these children, God, to make your kingdom a better place, I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would bless parents. I pray that you would bless students. God, let us see revival in our schools this year. Let us see people repent of their sins and come running to the cross. God, we love you so much. We are believing right now, God, that you're going to do this. And we commit right now in your name, God, that we are going to pray continually each and every day, God, over our children, parents, and teachers, God. Every day we're going to pray over this school year. We're going to pray, Father God, that you would move in a mighty way, that this year would be the best year yet. With your heads bowed and your eyes still closed, I just want to simply ask you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that's changed your life? The only way that you can change someone else's life is if you first have had Jesus change yours. So if you're here today and you say, you know, I I don't, I know Jesus, but I've never really could say that my life has changed as a result of that, then I would say you need to start fresh. You need to invite Jesus to come into your heart and let him change your life. If you're here today and that's you, you want to make that commitment. You want to be all in with Jesus. I'm going to count to three. And when I do, I want you to just raise your hand and we're going to pray a prayer together. No one's going to get embarrassed. We're just going to do it as a family. If that's you, you want a real relationship with Jesus, will you raise your hand on the count of three? One, two, three. Who are you this morning? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Best decision you'll ever make, you're making it now. We pray with me. Father God, I love you. Father God, I love you. I ask that you would come into my heart. I ask that you would come into my heart. That you would forgive me of my sins. That you would forgive me of my sins. That you would give me a real relationship with Jesus. That you would give me a real relationship with Jesus. That would change my life. That would change my life. Let me impact my community. Let me impact my community. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Will you give a hand to those that just made that decision? Awesome. And give a hand for these teachers and administrators that have joined us today. And those of you teachers in the congregation, thank you so much for what you guys do each and every week. We love you to pieces. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 
South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.